it was about 10 o'clock and the lines were still out in the open because of the overcast weather. We counted 11 lines. The other male, which made up the total of 12 lines in the Pride, was missing though. They looked in good condition but hungry. Yellow-billed kites and starlings squawked above the lines, which seemed to be keeping them awake. But slowly their eyes were drooping as the birds moved off and, and the noise stopped. Soon most of the pride was on their backs sleeping. The male lion started panting and opened his mouth and huge drips of drool were dropping from his mouth. One of the young cubs, uh, the only female cub in the pride, had become bored with uh, the slow day. A monitor lizard was moving through the grass and had sparked the, the cub's interest. The monitor lizard uh, didn't look like it was too amused with the lion and, uh, and it puffed up its throat and, and just sat there. It was lying pretty still, so the cub kind of lost interest until the monitor lizard decided to move again. And then it was after it. The monitor lizard moved through the grass and when the cub got too close, it uh, gave it a quick warning with a flick of its tail. The lion backed off for a second and the monitor lizard disappeared down a hole. The cub looked quite disappointed as it, as it peered down that its uh, entertainment had, had vanished. These are little cormorants. They've come in to roost in this tree. A little time later, the egrets started to arrive. This is what I really came here for. I'd heard that this was a, a terrific roost site for egrets. This site is only about a kilometer away from Bungsifai Swamp, which itself is surrounded by uh, wet rice fields. And that's where these birds, the cormorants and the egrets, all go to feed during the daytime. And then from about five o'clock or, or so onwards, they start to make their way towards this communal roost. The egrets roost here over our winter months. Occasionally, something spooked them and they took to the wing again, wheeling around in great groups and then coming back in to settle down once more. As the light faded even more, the birds got more and more vocal. And uh, then it was too dark to film, but the noise of this colony carried on long after the light had gone. And in fact, I was told that uh, they continued to make quite a lot of fuss right through the night.
I decided tonight to do a night dive. The little coral reef that lies between Mahe and Surf Island. And it was in this inky black soup that I jumped overboard and discovered a real surreal wonderland just below the boat. This is one of the inshore reefs, so you see a lot of brain coral, porous coral, and all sorts of organisms growing in between, encrusting this reef. The water was full of tiny organisms, almost like a planktonic soup that I guess the, the coral polyps must feed on, and some of the orange turret coral growing alongside the brain corals. There were numerous strange feather star type organisms that were wafting in the current, making the most of all the little critters that were floating in the sea. A type of scorpion fish which I'd never seen before perched on top of a, a dead brain coral. Its profile was quite unusual and we haven't yet identified this particular creature. A giant moray lying in the shadows, obviously hunting at night, just biding its time waiting for something to swim past. I thought its crop looked quite full and I'd wondered if it's just fed on a fish that happened by. I found quite a few fish that were actually sleeping. Here are a little Toby resting on the surface of one of the porous corals. And it's quite intriguing to see the changeover between the diurnal and the nocturnal species of the reef. The soft coral is definitely being one of the nocturnal species, all protruding from their little protective sheaths, filtering the water and feeding on all these little tiny microscopic organisms that just get picked up by the light. And here's a sleeping parrotfish, cocooned in its mucous membrane that it exudes from its mouth. It settles in, wiggles itself into a crevice, and coats its whole body with this fine coating of mucus, which sometimes picks up the sand and it's the only reason you can see this coating. It's an amazing defensive mechanism for one of the bigger fish that actually do sleep on the reef.